Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode powered by Hayabusa is all about strategies and tactics you need to use to beat your first Southpaw. In today's episode, we're breaking down how to fight a Southpaw for the first time. And to do so, we're breaking it down into four very important parts. But the first thing you need to realize is Knowing if your opponent's southpaw or orthodox should be the first thing you investigate when watching. That's the first thing I even ask the promoter or I ask my fighter, are they orthodox or are they southpaw? Because that's going to determine how we approach this fight. It's going to change our movement, our strategies, our tactics. But the one thing I want you to understand is don't overstress about it, okay? That's the main thing I always hear. The southpaw curse. Oh my god, things are different it's not as bad as you think. And if you really break it down into these four little categories, it's just gonna help you be a little bit more comfortable. So the reason I'm breaking it down into four is because each part helps you know, with the bigger picture, okay? Because in the bigger picture of things, when it comes to fighting, you have to move. And movement's gonna be slightly different against the southpaw. Defense, slightly different. And some of your strike tactics, you know? If I'm a low kicker and I'm used to having the lead leg in front of me, now it's behind, now it's different, different angles, so we're gonna break it down for you. So, the first thing we're gonna talk about, the first category, is your movement. Now, with this movement, you need to understand first things is the range, okay? Now, all the time, everyone's gonna say step outside the lead foot. Well, that's correct, right? You should be looking to step outside. But the main thing I like to teach my fighters when it comes to a southpaw is just understand your, your traditional range, right? And what weapon can hit you in each range. Now, when, if Matt punches and puts his punch out, okay, I like to be on a southpaw. I like to be what we call double distance, right? When I'm starting a fight, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? I'm scared of the power weapon, so I like to stay at that little longer range. And, and with this little bit of a longer range here, at least I can say if Matt kicks me, I'm good. If Matt punches me, I'm out of range. So from this range, I could be fainting and I could be circling, okay? Now, the main thing you need to know too is you don't always wanna circle to the outside of the foot. Sometimes I might circle the inside, right? So ideally I'm circling this way, as most people know, for that avoiding of the power side. I'm circling away from it. But I could also encourage myself to circle inside a little bit. Because I know that double range I'm talking about, even if I'm circling inside and Matt kicks, look, I'm still in such a long range that I can read things very well. So planning that little bit of extra distance is gonna help you feel a little bit more comfortable. Comfortable, okay. Now, as the fight progresses, okay, you're gonna see my fighters or me eventually kind of close the distance a little bit. And now we move into your traditional range. Now, from this traditional range, I'm gonna use more of the lead hand play, right? From out here, I might be probing, punching the hand, maybe throwing shots here. But as I step in now, the importance of controlling the lead hand and circling is what's gonna help me, okay? So you can see how the movement's starting to play. Now. If I'm circling outside here, I'm still safe trying to drop my rear hand, but at the same time, he's fighting my hand and dropping the same punches, right? So I need to be careful. So ideally, you're moving outside or on, on the inside if you're extra long. Now, as you get more comfortable, I might be stepping in here on purpose. I'm waiting for Matt's rear hand to maybe block it and then come out and attack. Okay, so I do sometimes like to go on the inside, but the main strategy for your first fight, okay, if you know you're the better puncher, circle inside sometimes. If you're fighting someone who's traditionally known to maybe have more power in their hands than you and you're nervous about it, then you circle outside. But if I know my right hand, my rear straight is more powerful than my opponent's, okay, I might circle outside a few times, you know, keep circling, hitting, then all of a sudden I step inside and boom, I drop that nice rear straight. And that's the shot I want because I'm breaking their center line. I'm attacking right down the middle. They can't defend it, okay? So the idea, play double distance. As you get comfortable, slowly work your way in. Play the hand control, lead foot control. But remember, going inside isn't wrong, especially if your advantage is in the power of the hands, okay? So movement, number one. Now, number two, we're talking about boxing, right? As I just mentioned, if you want to get the power, you get inside, okay? So I can circle here, 
But my main shot is using this hand control on the outside. Okay, I'm hand controlling, I'm outside, and then this is when I drive my rear straight down the middle. Now, I love throwing in vertical, right, because it just gets it nice and long, and it's easy to split the guard. So, from the outside play, just make sure you control this hand. If your opponent has his hand on top of yours, he can start punching on top. He could even jab on top of my hand, right? This hand here, you can play here. It's very dangerous. So as soon as I feel Matt put his hand on mine, I'm fighting that hand. Or if I feel that I can't get my hand out, I'm gonna exit out and try to fight that hand again, okay? So that's gonna help me box a little bit more. Now, the strategies I wanna see you play with, okay, and I don't see this enough, and again, this is maybe your first, you know, earlier fights of your career, so boom. Drive that rear straight to the body, very nice, okay? I can drive it to the face, very nice, okay? Now, what I like to do after going inside, right, dropping my straight, I like to use angled shuffles around, boom, get around the hand, okay? Now, even with this hand, boom, I hit here. If I want, I could sh angle shuffle around to get a big power shot, or an even nicer hand control, shoot, and then I throw my hook on top here. Okay, and I could punch through. So my main shots, hand control here, and I'm looking to cut on top. And you can see the angle I have now, very beautiful, okay? So inside, outside, hand control, looking a lot for this straight here, coming here, and maybe attacking on that angle, very important, okay? Those are the key. Yes, there's options, variations, but these are the main tactics you're looking for. Now with the kicks, this is where I become a little bit more of a specialist, right? Now even when I'm here, that double distance, I'm gonna keep referring in this video, nice and long, right? With this double distance, right? When I'm kicking, I usually know maybe I have the advantage where he might be the better boxer, right? So here goes my gameplay, okay? Number one, safest one, I'm gonna kick the inside leg. Now, a lot of times I don't like this because what happens, most people, when they're a southpaw, sometimes stand bladed. So without even blocking, if I kick right here, I'm already getting my instep on you know, the knee, I have a chance of hurting my foot, and as an amateur, I have really hurt my foot many times hitting the inside knee. So, that's option one. If you can land it, keep going to it. Now, my favorite option, okay, is going to be kicking the arms, right? Now, I know they're a power kicker. Uh, I know they're a power puncher. I'm a power kicker, so I'm gonna use that to my advantage. So even before the cross comes, I'm gonna start kicking the arm as best as possible, and that's gonna keep them pinned. Now, because of double distance, say he goes to punch me, boom, I'm so long still that I can defend the punch and land the beautiful kick. So as he throws it, I'm looking to kick here, right? Or if he doesn't and he's waiting, I kick the arm. Then he throws it again, boom. And you notice, look at my hand control, right? I'm here, I'm controlling the hands. As Matt maybe throws a lead hand after, this hand is here. The double distance is really nice for me, okay? So, same concept with hand control, hit the inside leg. I kick the arm. If they're starting to get aggressive with the punching, I block, I look to get underneath. Now, if I can kind of move inside, shell them up a little bit, this is when I'm gonna attack the back leg. Another one of my personal favorites, okay? So, those are the options you have, right? Now, again, you have a head kick, which is the last one, which you can set up, but ideally, you're playing with these other tactics before you go to the head, okay? So, hand control, I could even step outside, right, to attack the leg. I might sometimes even come in here to kick the arm. He throws the punch, get underneath it. I can shell him here, attack the leg, exit out, and be nice and safe, okay? And then if I want, I already set it up, head kick, finish, boom, okay? That's my options. Now, one, some people, okay, and I mean, I would say for your first few fights, very dangerous, especially if you know they're a power puncher. Be careful with these switches to the outside lead leg because as I switch, I'm basically squaring myself up to eat the rear power. So just be careful. If, I, if you want, you can faint, stay long. There's ways, but to me, it's, you don't get enough damaging shot. The risk versus the reward isn't there all the time, right? But as you get more comfortable as the fight goes on, that's a great option for you. Now, let's move on. The last part is defense. Now, defense is gonna change a little bit. You're used to catching a certain way, a certain punch. So, let's talk about some of the main things you need to be cautious of, okay? Now, when I'm circling this way a lot, right, I still know that punch is coming, so I'm gonna parry very 
important, right? I have to parry with confidence, okay? So if Matt drives a nice rear straight, I need to make sure that I block it very well, okay? Very key, boom. Now I'm always protected, so that is one way. You parry. Now, they might be good, they might be sneaky. Now, even versus southpaw, using this lead wedge tactic is very important for me because I still want to land my power attacks, okay? So if Matt throws a jab, Boom, my wedge, Matt throws jab cross. Look, I'm still being able to block everything with the lead wedge, okay? Very important, this is one of the keys I like to use versus the southpaw. Now, I always wanna stay here because my right kick is my power weapon, or I can keep my rear straight powered. So if Matt throws a jab cross, boom, boom, crack, I can come back. Throws a jab cross, boom, I can come back and kick. Jab cross again, I can come and still keep my lower side, uh, rear side powered up as much as possible, okay? So, using the wedge, very important. Now, the last one I wanna make sure you get for defense is the long guard. And it's, it's, it's a form of long guard, right? So, what I like to do, okay, with this health paw, fainting's gonna be important, right? Because for me to enter, I have to step in. And I'm scared of that rear hand, right? I gotta be cautious of it. So, me, me fainting, me fainting a lot, seeing even if Matt throws it, boom, as it comes back, Right away, I make sure I control that rear hand. As soon as I enter, whether it's a clinch, closing of the distance, I faint, boom, right away. As soon as I have that opportunity, this hand pins this hand in. This way I can throw a knee, I can come in, maybe clinch, give him a push off attack, and be able to attack the legs again, okay? So, making sure after I faint, boom, right away I grab this hand. I pin it, this way it's not coming out. Even if I'm on the way and he goes to throw it, I jam it anyways. And if he turns it into a hook or something, I can still block it and still be able to generate the power with my rear side, okay? So very important concept to think about, all right? So I know this is a lot in one video and it can go even more and even longer and even more uh, detailed and advanced. But just the key things, when you're fighting your first southpaw, don't get overwhelmed, okay? I know this video almost makes it seem like a lot of information, but it's all subtle little changes. You don't have to make it this big demon inside of you, okay? So one, establish your movement. If your movement and distance control is good, they can't hit you anyway. So move, be safe, and then work your entries, okay? That's the second thing. Boxing, okay? Use your hands. If your hands are your weapons, use it. Kick tactics, you know, you have the inside back leg, body, head. Change it up, use your hands, control that lead hand, step inside, outside, and just make sure defense is always good, all right? So break down the tactics into four parts and it'll help you out for your fight, all right? Hope you like, subscribe, share Bazooka Kickboxing with everyone, and make sure you support the channel by going to Hayabusa Fight, and make sure you check out their T3 boxing glove line, my personal favorite, perfect sports nutrition, I'll give you 20% off by using the code bazooka20, and we have bazookatraining.com, which is the bazooka kickboxing website taught by me with curriculum that's right now, I would say over 120 to 150 archive videos plus four brand new videos every single Monday that are broken up into four categories. Home workouts, which literally you don't need any equipment, bag workouts, tutorials, and sparring drills. And it's only $9.99 per month, four videos every week, plus the big large archive. All right, hope you like, subscribe, share. We'll see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. I'm Bazooka Joe Valtellini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach Bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. 
The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at-home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.